somebody just got dunked on. That's sad. Oh, got dunked on. <laughs> Back to the report. Thank you. Teron, what do you like about him? Oh, he's got to do it again. Of course. Do you guys part of the after school program? What, doesn't want him? All of us in the after school program and in the larger community of Sarah as a whole, we kind of do this as a team. We work at this together, you know, with Mr. Price, Ms. Brown, and Ms. King, and Ms. Jasmine. Well, I'm here Monday through Friday, so I spend a lot of time with them, and I pretty much know the majority of all the kids. Sarah had the privilege of being one of those schools that offer this after school program with so many programs within itself because a lot of other schools do not offer it. We provide programming through arts and music and athletics. We also serve as a space for students to really um, come and feel connected to the school and their peers. Thank you. Well, I came here after school one day and I had just wanted to give up on art because I was so frustrated with life, I never actually felt like doing it. So, like, when I was here, my friends and people close to me actually made me want to continue by encouraging me, so that's why I continue drawing. My name is John Mira Francis. My name is Severio. Y'all can call me Seth for short. My name is Dashane Brown. I'm Jahal Olari, a.k.a. SFLJ. I mean, I think that we are a community in this after-school space. We have the same students that show up every day. Um, everybody knows each other's names. We all grow, laugh, and cry together. Even when students don't have to be here, our students are here. Joe Silva? What's up? How's it going? Seb travels a long way to get here. You know, he gets up every morning and makes that long haul and is here after school and does it day in and day out. Every Friday night, I go over to my dad's house and we watch Friday Night Smackdown. I really got into it and I didn't realize I wanted to become one until I hit 10th grade and I started to develop Ace Rael. He started out in the thought and now he's me. I, okay, here's a quote from Ace, it might make y'all laugh actually. Hey. I was talk I was I was hearing his voice in my head the other day and he was like, you know, I'm you know, I'm, you know these like these humans like this. They, I breathe in dark fumes. Like, I was like, what? Well, so you, I breathe in dark fumes. Every time I look around, I'm just like, like Ugh, oxygen. I'm like, okay. Okay. just because you're from the underworld doesn't mean you gotta come, come, come out here in this freaking res disrespect. The oxygen, we assume, breathe. Like, I've always loved acting and TV and stuff mm -hmm. because I've just grown up one of those kids just watching TV all the time. Like, I love being able to just be so intrigued by this kind of world that even though I know it doesn't exist, if they make me think it exists, mm -hmm. it's awesome. I want to be one of these guys. That's like, I want to be an Avenger, one of these guys. Yes, that's the dream. That's the big dream. I have so many different kinds of imaginations in my own head, so many different kinds of stories. I'm able to be happiest when I'm living my imagination. Yes, Dashini, and that's my best friend. The first time I talked to her was when we were in after school. And they made us talk or share our names and stuff and play, like, do icebreakers. I told her how I cook for my family. She's like, if you, like, who, anybody who cook for me is my best friend. I was like, hey, maybe I should cook you something then. Got up early the next day and I made her an omelet. When I get to school, we've been best friends ever since. Yeah. I love the kids. I love the kids. Some wanted to be doctors, some wanted to be teachers, some wanted to be lawyers, so they did a big paper mural. We have some great artists here. We have a lot of kids that's talented. I mean, the reason I started drawing in the first place was because it was my outlet for when I was having any feeling. So 
when I draw most of my pictures, if it has my character in it, it's either, all right, I'm just trying to make him look cool because it's me. I want to look dope and I wish I looked this way in real life. But like, my character captures my emotions. The emotions I want to share, but I know if I do, people will look at me as, oh, you, you're a punk, basically. Like, you're not supposed to be crying. You're not supposed to feel like you're broken. You're not supposed to feel in love. What, what are you doing, right? Started in a good part of Philly, northeast Philadelphia, like far out in the suburbs. Then coming to Syria where it all like changed because I was in a different neighborhood and I wasn't used to the things that's going on around me, especially with all the violence. I like look at rapping as a way to take, if I'm angry, let all my frustration out through my music, through my lyrics. Everybody can connect with music, so when they hear my music, they think like, oh wow, well maybe I'm this person he's talking about in the song and I can relate to this person, so maybe I should chill out for real, for real. I like the flex in the style, but I see you hate the fact I'm taking off like a rock and, and you know, young in this pop, but I ain't from Philly. I'm from the 215. If you talk crazy, you might not just survive. I've been really up here in the field, yeah. I was really up in the field. I was doing some dirt, I regret it, yeah. Doing some dirt, I regret it, yeah. Uh, see, every last song I have written is literally a sad song about something that happened to me. So tell me why it was about, it was about me getting rejected and how I was trying to convince myself I, was, I didn't lose anything by that and that it made me stronger. So tell me why. So tell me why is it so hard to show you I can be wrong. I know it's hard sometimes trying to make it in the end. Trying to prove that you're someone to depend on. Basically, me and Ace grew up trying to let people know that we matter. So struggling, getting bullied every day growing up, sucked for the both of us. So, which is why I don't like bullies here today. Because just looking at that, it makes you look at that, that timid kid I was. And I feel like no one should have suffered any type of bullying. Because it's not right. Like I said, I never really unleashed Ace Rael until I was sick and tired of being pushed around. And I kind of took it out of my closet door. That's basically when Israel actually was born. I've always felt like an alien, always, because I was always so different from everybody else. Like, I've always had different goals, ambitions, and I always wanted to be different. There was a certain time when I was younger, and, like, I was being bullied a lot, and that caused a whole lot of um, low self-esteem and problems where, I, like, I couldn't, I couldn't see the beauty in myself. I couldn't really be myself. I would tell freshman Dashane to stay focused, but I would also tell my freshman self to work, try to find a way to work on my issues a bit differently than I did then. Like actually consider seeing a therapist and trying to talk to my parents more about my issues. I realized my 10th grade year actually, it was time for me to be mature. All the immatureness that was in me, I needed to let go and just get out. It's, it's, it's not wasn't for me. I was different. I ain't wanna sit there and continue to live the same lifestyle, which could make me end up dead or in jail. It wasn't leaving nobody behind, because when I changed my lifestyle and my friends saw that I was doing great, they are changing their lifestyle too. Like, they like, oh, well, Jihad stopped doing this. Now look at this, now look at it now. Let me do this. My turn. Then it's like, then once they do it, they probably got younger siblings or other people in the community that's seeing them change their ways, and it's causing everybody to change. But I feel like one person at a time can do, can like basically change a whole village, change a whole place at once.
see them carry on and go on to college and getting a job, uh, it means a lot and it speaks volumes to the work that we do here. You know, the little 15-year-old kid is now 18 and they're getting ready to graduate and um, they've been here every day their whole career. That really just shows that the students are really invested in their space and they're invested in what they want to do with their lives and you know they're challenging the narrative of you know these kids go to say or can't do much which is completely inaccurate we have such an amazing group of students here at say you know we have our challenges but i think that um, there's lots of um, great and positive things that happen here i'm gonna miss it i'm gonna miss everything i did here for real I there's so much I did. I for real, for I really do want to let like Joe and them and the facilitators of the program let them know that I appreciate them the shows that I got and with me playing basketball, rapping, and everything. Graduation day for most of them is the biggest thing because a lot of them feel like it's so much going on outside. They don't. They're some of them have that delay. Like I'm not sure if I'm going to make it, but they did. I, I didn't apply to 40 colleges and like, trust me, like I'm making sure I'm walking across that stage senior year, getting accepted into 16 colleges so far, the rest haven't come in yet. And just uh, practicing my monologue, all of this is going towards what I'm gonna be in the future. People said I was different after the accident, that the blow to my head had hurt me. Maybe. Six months to think about things changed me. Banging my brain changed me. But I look at people and people change. Don't you agree? A program full of caring adults that really passionately and truly care about them. We really love these kids. Um, we pour our hearts out for these students. And we Seeing them mature to graduation and getting ready to, to leave the space and into the world is such a... Uh, frightening, amazing <laughs> uh, thing to witness. Mm -hmm. I'm not afraid of this world because I survived the bullying. I survived, you know, the negativity, everything. And I'm still standing. I'm still kicking and breathing. It's like, you know what? I'm going to dive head first in this world, not a care in the world, and just do me. I'm gonna show them different, like, they've lived down on us for so many years that they're gonna be looking up one day. All that stuff y'all thought I couldn't do, I could do now. You know how people say you can do whatever you put your mind to? And I, I put my mind to this, I'm putting my work to this, and I'm not stopping until I get there. And I will get there, so that's just it, period. I don't wanna take over the world, but I, I'm pretty sure my one day my art will, because my passion is overflowing. Like, I draw so much in practice, so if I was the fell, it's because I was broken. Guess what? Nothing's breaking me, even though I, I, I say I'm broken a lot. I'm gonna always push, the, the, push myself to the limits, and I'm gonna make my dream come true. That's how I know I'm gonna be a success. Like, I don't want to just be like rambling on like one second. Yeah. I'm talking about this. I'm talking about yeah. stew. <laughs> you, know, you know what the ironic part is? You no, know, it's all about darkness. Yeah. His name, Rael, that's right now, means Lord of the Light. I can't drop. <laughs> well, I didn't know if you Stop cringing on camera.